Welcome again to our academy and the channel Wet Guide. See today we came up with a very interesting topic for the scholars who are working or willing to work in clinics. Today we are going to see various non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs which you can use in your practice. We will see what are non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, their mechanism of action and specific non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs you can use in specific conditions. Okay, so let's start our video with a basic concept that what are non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs? Well, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs are members of a drug class that reduces pain, decreases fever, prevents blood clots and in higher doses decreases inflammation. Now after all of that, why don't we always prefer non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs over steroids? Well the answer is, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs have the potential to relieve pain and inflammation without the myriad potential metabolic, hemodynamic and immunosuppressive adverse effects associated with corticosteroids. Oh, uh, dear wets, now we will see the mechanism of action of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. In a cell, inflammation is first initiated by physical, chemical, mitogenic and other inflammatory stimuli. These stimuli activate the enzyme phospholipase A2. Phospholipase A2 causes the release of arachidonic acid a 20 carbon fatty acid from the cell membrane. The enzyme prostaglandin G and H synthase has cyclooxygenase and hydroperoxidase activity. Prostaglandin G and H synthase converts arachidonic acid to prostaglandin H2. Prostaglandin H2 is then converted by tissue specific isomerases into a number of different inflammatory mediators called prostanoids. Now the type of prostanoid produced depends on the tissue and cell type. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs inhibit the cyclooxygenase components of phospholipase A2 and block the formation of prostaglandin G2. Now while in this slide we will discuss what is cyclooxygenase 1 and cyclooxygenase 2. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs block the enzyme cyclooxygenase. Cyclooxygenase has two main subtypes, cyclooxygenase 1 and 2. Cyclooxygenase 1 is found in most tissues and is present at all times, while cyclooxygenase 2 is typically undetectable in most tissues and is only produced in response to inflammation. Both cyclooxygenase enzymes play a role in propagating an inflammatory reaction through the production of prostaglandins. Cyclooxygenase 1 also plays an important role in gastric mucosal integrity, platelet aggregation, and kidney function. Cyclooxygenase 2 selective inhibitors also do not, do not, inhibit platelet aggregation. They do, however, inhibit renal prostaglandin and have similar renal effects as other non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Cyclooxygenase 2 inhibitors may also carry a higher risk of thromboembolic events. Some patients with ANSID allergies are allergic to cyclooxygenase 1 inhibiting effect of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. These patients will be allergic to all non-selective non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs but may tolerate non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs that have cyclooxygenase 2 selectivity. Now we will discuss specific non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Most non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs can be divided 
into two broad groups. First one is enolic acid derivatives. The main subgroups of enolic acids are the parazolones, which include phenylbutazone and the oxycams, which include meloxicam and pyroxicam. Carboxylic acid subgroups include the salicylates, which include aspirin. Now, propionic acids include ibuprofen, naproxen, carbuprofen, ketoprofen, and venaprofen. The phenomates include tolfenamic and meclofenamic acids. The phenylacetic acids include acetaminophen and amino nicotinic acids include flunixin. The newer coxib class of selective cyclooxygenase 2 inhibitors. Four antids of the coxib class which include deracoxib, firococcib, robinacoxib and mavacoxib have been introduced in veterinary medicine. Now we shall see every non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug one by one. We will discuss only the major points of course. First one is indication. Second, it's dosage. And third, it's adverse effects, if they have any. The first non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug we will discuss will be phenylbutazone. It is used to treat when horses indicate acute laminitis. Its dose rate in dogs is 3 to 7 milligrams per kilogram per oral thrice a day. Its dose rate in horses is up to 8.8 mg per kilogram injectable and followed by per oral at 2.2 to 4.4 mg per kilogram two times in a day. It has adverse effects on gastrointestine which includes anorexia and depression. Ulcers may also develop in the mouth, stomach, cecum and right dorsal colon associated with bleeding, hepatopathies, nephropathies, and rare cases of irreversible bone marrow suppression can also be seen. Now, meloxicam. It is used when animals indicate acute and chronic inflammation associated with musculoskeletal disease. It is also used for management of post-operative pain. In dogs, its one-time loading dose is 0.2 mg per kilogram per oral is recommended, followed by 0.1 mg per kilogram per oral. Its adverse effects shows that its gastrointestinal safety appears to be greater for meloxicam than for non-selective, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs because its cyclooxygenase 1 and cyclooxygenase 2 ratios suggest that the drug is cyclooxygenase 2 selective. Aspirin, which is used when animals indicate mild to moderate pain associated with musculoskeletal inflammation and osteoarthritis. Its dose rate in dogs is 10 to 40 milligrams per kilogram per oral twice or thrice in a day. Its adverse effects we can see even at therapeutic doses of 25 milligrams per kilogram. Plain aspirin may induce mucosal erosion and ulceration in dogs. Vomiting and melina may be seen at high, higher doses. Aspirin overdose in any species can result in salicylate poisoning characterized by severe acid-base abnormalities, hemorrhage, seizures, coma, and death. Carprofen is used when animal indicates pain and inflammation associated with osteoarthritis and acute pain associated with soft tissue and orthopedic surgery in dogs. Its recommended dosage is 4.4 mg per kilogram per day per oral or divided twice in a day. Its adverse effects include gastrointestinal signs which are vomiting, diarrhea and gastrointestinal 
ulceration. Ketoprofen, which is used when animals indicate acute pain. We use it up to five days in both cats and dogs. In horses, it is used for pain and inflammation associated with osteoarthritis and visceral pain associated with colic. Its dose rate in dogs and cats is one milligram per kilogram per day for up to five days, intravenous or per oral. In horses, its dose rate is 2.2 milligrams per kilogram per day for up to five days, intravenous. And in cattle, its dose rate is milligram per kilogram per day for one to three days, intravenous or intramuscular. Its adverse effects include GI upset, hepatopathies, and renal disease. Wetaprofen, which is indicated for the treatment of pain and inflammation associated with musculoskeletal disorders in dogs with dose rate 0.5 mg per kilogram per day, and in horses with dose rate 1 mg per kilogram twice a day. For the treatment of pain associated with colic in horses, dose rate should be 2 mg per kilogram intravenous as a single injection. Mechalophenomic acid is used in the treatment of chronic laminitis. Its dose rate in dogs is 1.1 mg per kilogram per day for up to 5 to 7 days. Tolphenomic acid is used for fever, post-operative pain, and acute and chronic inflammatory conditions in cats, dogs, cattle, and pigs. Acetaminophen has analgesic and antipyretic effects similar to those of aspirin, but it has weaker anti-inflammatory effects than those of aspirin and other NSAIDs. The dose rate of acetaminophen in dogs is 10 to 15 mg per kilogram per oral thrice a day. It is contraindicated in cats because of deficiency of glucuronyl transferase. Its dose-dependent adverse effects include depression, vomiting, and methemoglobinemia. Flunixin is effective for visceral pain associated with colic in horses. It reduces the inflammatory-mediated hemodynamic response to endotoxin and reduces mortality associated with endotoxemic shock. It is also used to treat mastitis and acute pulmonary emphysema in cattle, but well, it's not approved for this. The recommended dosage is 1.1 mg per kilogram per day for 5 days per oral or intravenous. Its adverse effects seen if chronic administration of flunixin to dogs, it may result in severe gastrointestinal ulceration and renal damage. Deracoxin is used in post-operative pain and inflammation associated with orthopedic surgery at a dosage of 3 to 4 mg per kilogram per day for up to 7 days. It is also used for control of pain and inflammation associated with osteoarthritis at a dosage of 1 to 2 mg per kilogram per day. Ferrocoxin is used when animals indicate pain and inflammation associated with osteoarthritis, post-operative pain, inflammation associated with the soft tissue, and orthopedic surgery in dogs. Its dose rate is 5 mg per kilogram per oral. Robinococcin is used when animals indicate pain and inflammation associated with osteoarthritis, orthopedic soft tissue surgery in dogs and musculoskeletal disorders and soft tissue surgery in cats. Its dose rate is 2 mg per kilogram per oral initially and then 1 to 2 mg per kilogram per day. Mavacoxin 
is when dogs indicate pain and inflammation associated with degenerative joint disease. Its initial dose rate is 2 mg per kilogram per oral and repeated 14 days later. Total course should not exceed 7 doses. Etodolac inhibits macrophage chemotaxis and have efficacy for the treatment when animals indicate lameness associated with hip dysplasia. Its dose rate in dogs is 10 to 15 mg per kilogram per oral. Its adverse effects include gastrointestinal ulceration, vomiting, and weight loss. Tepaxlin is the inhibitor of COX-1 and COX-2 and 5 lipoxygenase. It is used to reduce components of inflammation not controlled by COX isoenzyme inhibition. Its initial dosage is 20 mg per kilogram, followed by a maintenance dosage of 10 mg per kilogram per day. Its adverse effect shows gastrointestinal-related diarrhea and vomiting. DOS a large number of prescription and non-prescription ANSATs are available for human use. However, because of species differences in metabolism, efficacy and toxicity, many are not recommended for use in animals. Ibuprofen is an aryl propionic acid derivative used in dogs and as an anti-inflammatory drug. However, dogs are much more sensitive the development of gastrointestinal adverse effects from ibuprofen administration than are people. At therapeutic doses, adverse effects seen in dogs include vomiting, diarrhea, gastrointestinal bleeding, and renal infection. Ibuprofen is not recommended for use in dogs or cats. Naproxen has been used in horses at a dosage of 5 to 10 mg per kilogram once or twice daily. The elimination half-life is 5 hours in horses. In dogs, the elimination half-life of naproxen is 35 to 75 hours normally, presumably because of extensive anterohepatic recirculation and prolonged half-life of naproxen, dogs are extremely sensitive to its adverse effects.